okay so welcome everyone for today's uh, uh, science of self realization reading chapter 6 we'll continue from where we had stopped uh, we had stopped here the discussion between uh, professor kotowski and uh, shila prabhupada so um, <clears throat> we are at this paragraph so prabhupada and kotowski are talking about varnashrama system varnashrama dharma uh, where the four Varanas are there, Brahmana, Kshatriya, Vaishya and Shudra and the four Ashramas are there, Brahmachari, Grihastha, Vanaprastha and Sanyas. So the Varanas are meant for material progress or, or to say to be materially satisfied. <clears throat> To be materially um, uh, happy in what one is doing according to one's modes according to one's quality one has um, <clears throat> and ashramas ashramas are meant for ashrama is meant for spiritual progress brahmachari grihastha vanapastha sannyas so Gra brahmachari is where one completely dedicates himself for uh, training purposes, learning Shastras, controlling mind and senses. And then one enters into Grahastha Ashram, where one marries a woman, a woman marries a man, <coughs> and then they have children, and then they have material life and spiritual life, both. And they have material and spiritual life both together. And then once the children grow up at the age of minimum 50 they grow up they are uh, young they are about 25 years old maybe more than that they are able to take control and you know become independent responsible at that point both husband and wife enter vanaprastha that is detached life where spiritual practice is more prominent and material uh, life is reduced to bare minimum then as one grows and becomes mature in spiritual progress, the man decides that he can take sannyas, where he completely gives up material life, zero material life and no woman association, completely dedicated, he takes to sannyas ashram. So that is the spiritual progress. So this is how Varnashram system is there and this is what Professor Kotowski and Shila Prabhupada is discussing. So let's start with uh, our reading. So, someone read what Srila Prabhupada is saying and someone read what uh, Professor Kotowski is saying. Uh, I need two volunteers. Anyone to what Srila Prabhupada is saying? I'll read Prabhu Prabhupada. I'll read Prabhuji. Okay, okay, okay. Start. Hmm? That is stated. Yeah. <clears throat> That is stated, Kalau Sudra Samabhavaha. In this age, practically all men are Sudras, but if, if there are simply Sudras, the social order will be disturbed. In spite of your state of Shudra, the Brahmana is found here and that is necessary. If you don't divide the social order in which in such a way there will be chaos. That is a scientific estimation of the Vedas. You may belong to the Sudra class, but no main, to maintain social order, you have to train some of the Sudras to become Brahmanas. So society cannot depend on Sudras, nor uh, can you depend on the Brahmanas. To fulfill the necessity of your body, there must be a brain, arms and, and arms and stomach and legs. The legs and the brain and the arms are all required for corporation to fulfill the mission of the whole body. So in, in any society, you can see that unless there are these four divisions, there will be chaos. If there are these four divisions, there will be chaos. If it will be, uh, it, it will not work properly. It will be Maya and there will be, there will there be, will be uh, brain. brain. Okay, how, yeah, how, how can you start echoing? Echo uh, just, uh, just for everyone. Hello, Hare Krishna. Um, everyone just okay, mute the, and the one okay. is speaking. Yeah. 
the brain must be there but at the present moment there is a there is a scarcity of brains i am not taking of your state of state or my state but i'm taking i'm taking the word as a whole formally the indian ad administration yeah, just, just hold just hold on so uh, i want to just discuss this point that yesterday we discussed yeah we discussed yes <clears throat> so in the body you know there is brain arm stomach legs right they are all required to cooperate to fulfill the mission of the whole body if you want the whole body to be healthy the brain arms legs they all need to work for the stomach okay and should not think that oh the stomach is the only enjoying person no the stomach is also working and the stomach is digesting the food and then uh, uh, that nutrients are getting transferred into blood and the blood and the heart is pumping all the blood all over the body and the brain the legs stomachs they are getting uh, legs hands arms they are getting all the energy so there is a cooperation okay of all the ful to fulfill the mission similarly in the society all these brahmana vaishya shudras there is no competition between them they have to cooperate and we saw that how they need to cooperate we saw that uh, the brahmanas are the head the kshatriyas are the hand the vaishyas are the belly the shudras are the legs okay uh, the head is to direct what we need to do what is right to do right and what is not right to do and hands are the one that will listen to the head and then what is right what is wrong they done and then what is to be eaten what is not to be eaten he will put it in the belly where to go and acquire that where to walk all that decision is taken by the brahmana and he directs the legs the shudras so like that so it's a cooperation thing and the same philosophy of cooperation can be applied to a team especially in married life husband wife married life there is one small point i want to add here i talked about cooperation but now we have to do decision making okay so we have a team or let's say we'll take a married life case scenario you know married couple so now we have to do two things we have to cooperate and we have to decide also so now how this will work in a team or in a married couple i want some ideas from you sir your side because we need to understand sometimes in cooperation we have to take decision how will that decisions be made what are the various ways of making decision in a team in a married couple life any answers any guess No one. Pooja, uh, you ah. know maybe the department should be divided like home, home taking okay. care of the home. Okay, we'll take that decision. Care. Okay, so there is a prime minister, and there is a what home minister. Yeah. Okay, let's take only two ministers. Okay. <laughs> now mm. they have to cooperate and they have to decide decision maker. So now. who is the decision maker who's who and bo bo both are cooperating so now who is the decision maker what what are your thought process <coughs> what what all scenarios can come in decision making Prabhu ji, I can only deal with my experience. At yeah. the home front, I take the decision, and the other part, my husband takes the decision. Okay, so that is what is called a mutual decisions. Yeah. One scenario so is, is mutual decision making. Another is primary decision making. This is also one scenario, right? Somebody takes the primary decision, and then somebody takes the secondary decisions. This also works, right? it's not always sometimes mutual someone has to take the primary the final decision right like sometimes finance you know and sometimes in that mostly in many households the husband takes the decision agreed but when it comes to food taking care of children with school etc and our home then the wife takes the primary decision 
the husband takes the secondary decision so so this is also there then there are mutual decisions both discuss and they decide agreed so both, both scenarios happen there's a mutual and then there's a primary secondary decision sometimes you know the husband says you decide and i will just follow sometimes wife say you decide i'll follow right agreed or sometimes both sit and then yeah okay this point of yours this point of mine okay now mutually we decide okay so there is a mutual decision there is a primary secondary decision and uh, third point is then there is cooperation so uh, you are you are seeing this uh, sorry okay so for decision making right you need a hierarchy decision making needs hierarchy hierarchy you understand let me show you a diagram like hierarchy if you see on the right hand side there is a there's a head of it and then there are uh, sub department levels like that and then you know there are farkal levels so for decision making we need hierarchy someone has to make a decision someone has to become the primary decider right even if there is mutual there can be a primary decision like suppose you know the married couple is buying house they are mutually discussing but the who is the making the primary decision so most of the time husband is making the primary decision he has to think about finance right if everything is good but finance is not that good or so let's say finance budget doesn't match then husband says oh, we have to give up this right so hierarchy gives us power for decision making now where does cooperation sit into this if we say hierarchy like like if you go back to our example of prime minister and home minister prime minister is definitely the primary decision maker or let's say the final decision maker so hierarchy we know prime minister under him or under the prime minister comes home minister so here is the hierarchy but now how the cooperation happens does cooperation needs hierarchy that is my question does cooperation needs hierarchy what are your thoughts okay what is cooperation cooperation is doing work or service or activity what last word fill in the blanks what is cooperation cooperation is doing up certain certain activity together right mutual understanding yeah mutual understanding is there but most importantly together mutually together or mutually so when we so when decisions are made then there is a hierarchy but when a work is done when activity is done that is done on the same level okay decision needs hierarchy one needs to be above one needs to be lower but when the actual work is done right it is still done on a same plane it is not done one is higher one is lower no if 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 let's say the decision was uh, i will lead the cooking and he will lay, uh, husband will help so now the actual activity of cooking happens the wife is taking the decisions but when the actual activity happens cutting some uh, vegetables stirring you know tadka this that etc that is happening on the same level right you understand so there is where is the hierarchy is not there there you work together decision someone will uh, for decision you need hierarchy but cooperation is are done on the same level so there everyone becomes same right D does this point clear yes prabhu ji <clears throat> okay so um 
so it's same way you know varnashan system right even if the brahmana is at the head when it comes to actually doing some activity right there will be some hierarchy will be there but when it comes to cooperation they will consider it to be same and uh, like you know this famous pastime of chaitanya mahaprabhu where he was been uh, where the where a huge abhishek was taking up and and he was given abhishek and everyone was involved the brahmanas were involved vaishyas were involved shudras were involved the kshatriyas were involved everyone was involved i i think so this happened in uh, yeah mayapur in in navdeep dham this happened so everyone was involved advaita acharya the senior most brahmana all some devotees were vaishyas they were involved the shudras so the servant of uh, uh, shiva's pandit's house her name was dukhi she was also involved and they were bringing water and they were giving it you know and ultimately advaita acharya or nityan prabhu were putting water on um uh, doing abhishek or lord chaitanya so on the activity level all of them are doing that same activity and there is no one thinking i am lower i am higher no decision making yes advaita acharya will make the decision something like that so lord chaitanya when he sees this cooperation right he sees everyone is kind of equal and everyone is doing to the best of their ability so when he saw that this is a a a a, a lady who name her name was dukhi and the reason was that in her family you know children were dying so the one child to survive they said let's put the name dukhi so that even yamraj becomes sad you know to to take away the child <laughs> so that is some you know village uh, uh, what you say <laughs> uh thought process something like that so anyway her name was dukhi and chaitan babu said from today you are no more dukhi you are sukhi so he changed the name so uh you see when we cooperate right everyone is then equal there is the, there is no hierarchy that time but decision making requires hierarchy we just need to understand this thing otherwise we will find faults in varnashan system so varnashan system works in this way for decision making there is a hierarchy but when the actual work is done everyone is on the same plane and we get to see in our companies and our home it is like that okay so with this two important points let's move forward um let's start from here the brain must be there i'll start prabhu ji yeah you were reading right yeah uh, the brain the must brain be. must be there Huh. but at the present moment there is a scar- scarcity of brain i am not talking of your state or my state i am talking talking i am taking the world as a whole the formerly the indian administration was the mon- uh, monarchy for example maharaja parikshit was the kshatriya king but before his death he renounced his royal order he he became he came to the forest to hear about self realization if we want to maintain the peace and prosperity of the whole world society you must create a very intelligent class of man the class of man expert in administration the class of man expert in production and the class of man of work men of, of to work that is required you cannot avoid it that is the vedic con- conception uh, mukha mukha bahuru padajaha shrimad bhagavatam 11.17.13 mukha means the face bahu means the arm and aru means the wrist and the pada means the leg where whether you take this state or that state unless there is a smooth systematic establish, establishment of these four or four orders of life the state of state or society will not run very smoothly hari krishna okay so one line i want to discuss is you must have you must create a very intelligent class of men a class of men expert in administration a class of men expert in production a class of men expert in work it this statement means both things okay these are expert in their material duties as well as spiritual duties okay so this is an assumption that is there in this statement prabhu is not saying oh we need somebody you know who is very expert in production 
so our mind will always think expert in production means uh, he knows how to produce more and all that no it is not just that it is even from the spiritual angle otherwise uh, one will exploit to get the production more but from the spiritual angle he will understand i need to i need to not exploit i need to follow the isha vasha midam sarvan principle i cannot enroach on the other person's quota so that both on the both, both both knowledge he will have he will know how to increase the production and as well as how to keep the balance and similarly for administration also very expert in administration he will know how to fight with enemies expand kingdom but he won't just go and do it you know erratically like uh, alexander or something just go and you know kill everyone and or or the Jeng, jenghis khan you know just go and kill no they will do it dharmically so the way they were used to do is they would challenge the king and they would say if you don't submit then we will fight and the the, uh, the fight or the battle would happen only when they would won't submit in some cases the king would submit yes you are a superior king i will submit to you and i will pay my taxes to you so then there was no fight the king uh, the monarch would then move to another kingdom like that so they were expert in both material and spiritual duties okay professor kotoski uh, someone can read hari krishna yeah read read Do I, yeah prabhupada to read right oh, okay someone uh, kotoski can anyone volunteer to read kotoski hari krishna prabhuji yeah uh, go ahead madam uh, professor kotoski generally it seems to me that this whole varnashrama system to some extent created a natural diversion of labor in the ancient society but now division of labor among people in any society is much more complicated and sophisticated so it is very confusing to group them into four classes go ahead confusion has come to exist exist because in because in india at the later day the son of the brahmana without having the brahmanical qualification claim to be brahmana and other out of uh, superstition or traditional way accepted him as a brahmana there therefore the indian social order was disrupt, disrupted but in other in our krishna consciousness movement we are training brahmanas everywhere because the world needs needs the brain of brahmana although maharaja parikshit was the monarch was a uh, monarch he had a body of brahmana and learned uh, sages of uh, sages to consult an advisory body it is not that it is not that the monarchs were uh, dependent in history it was it was found that if some, some of the monarch were not in order they were uh, dethroned by the Brah brahmanical advisory council although the brahmanas did not take part of in politics they would advise the monarch how to execute the royal function this is not too far for in the past how long how long ago was ashoka so just one thing i want to discuss here is uh, uh, in kaliyuga uh, the kaliyuga started with uh, when krishna le left he left to his abode then uh, Uh, Parikshit Maharaj ruled for some year. Kaliyuga was there. He had controlled and he had kept Kaliyuga very far away. But one fine day, he got cursed by a Brahmana's Brahmana's son, who said, "You know." Uh, so the mistake was that uh, Parikshit Maharaj he was feeling very thirsty in the forest and he reached to this Shringi's ashram, and Shringi was in meditation, so he didn't. receive parikshit maharaj and give him water so parikshit maharaj got a little bit angry and there was a dead snake he put the dead snake on the on the head of uh, the uh, rishi muni and the rishi muni didn't know that what is happened and and parikshit maharaj went away then the son of the rishi muni came and he saw that there is a dead snake on his father's neck so he got angry and he said whoever did this will die in 7 days by the bite of a snake so basically he cursed parikshit maharaj to die in 7 days and in and in saying so he 
he said that we brahmanas are very superior and the and the kshatriyas are inferior and they are doing such insult to us so instead of tolerating that insult he thought himself to be superior and the kshatriyas to be inferior so this judgmental thing came into his mind and from that time the fall down of the brahmanas happened and kaliyuga progressed and prabhupad points here that in today's the brahmana's son is you know called a brahmana but how do we correct it by training so without training you cannot be called brahmana it's just like you know yesterday i asked this question if you are an engineer and you have a son you cannot say your son is an engineer you have to train him you have to send him to four years of engineering and then he when he passes and he gets the engineering degree then you can say he is an engineer similarly if he is a doctor and all that they have to get trained So similarly, this Brahmana, Vaishya, Shudra, and all that, uh, they have to get trained, and then you can call. So you can correct the situation. Uh, okay, okay. So, so our movement is mainly focused on to get this brain of Brahmana. So if we can train the Brahmanas, and we can have many more Brahmanas, they will. be in positions to direct and then the kshatriyas will naturally change the vaishyas will change the shudras will change and then it will be a peaceful society okay professor kodaski that <coughs> equal to what we call in our terminology ancient and medieval india yes old and feudal india you are right it was very open and the major part of the high administrative staff in the legislative department were brahmanas even in the mughal era there were brahmanas to advise the muslim emperors and administrators uh, that is that is a fact the brahmanas were accepted and they were they formed advisory committee of the king for example gang chandra gupta, chandra gupta. Chandragupt, uh, the Hindu king, was in the age of Alexander the Great. Just before Chandragupt, Alexander uh, the Great king, great went from Greece into the into India and conquered a portion. When uh, Chandragupt came became uh, emperor, he he had Chanakya as his prime minister. Perhaps you have heard his name, Chanakya. Yes. Yeah. yes he was a great brahmana politician and it is by by his name that the uh, the quarter of new delhi where all the foreign em uh, embassies are uh, grouped together is called charakya puri oh. charakya pandita was a great politician and brahmana he was a uh, vastly learned and his moral instructions uh, are still valuable in india school children are Taught Charakya Pandita's instruction. Although he was a great minister, Charakya Pandita mentioned maintained his Brahmana spirit. That he did not accept any salary. If if a Brahmana accepts a salary, it is understood that he was he has become a dog. That is a state stated in the Sri Bhagavatam. He he can advise, but he cannot accept employment. So Charakya Pandita was living in a cottage, but he was actually a prime minister. his brahmanical culture and his brahmanical brain in the in the is the standard of vedic civilization the manu smriti is an example of a standard of brahmanical culture you cannot trace out from from the history when the manu smriti was written and it was it is considered so perfect that it is a hindu law there is no need for the legislation legislature to pass a new law daily to adjust social order the give uh, the law given by manu is so perfect that it can be applicable for all time it is stated in sanskrit to be the three three trikaludu trikaludu which trikal what is that prabhu trikalado trikalado mm -hmm. which means mm -hmm. uh, good for the past present and future oh okay three all three past present okay i'm sorry to interrupt you but to my knowledge all of indian society in the second half of the 18th century was by the order of british administration under a law divergent from hindu law 
there was a lot of change. The actual Hindu law was that was used by the Hindus was quite quite different from the original Manusmriti. They have now made changes. Even our late Pandit Jawaharlal Nehru introduced his own Hindu code. He introduced the right of right of divorce in marriage, but it was not a Manu Samhita. It was not in the Manu Samhita. There was no many. There there were so many things they have changed. But before this modern age, the whole human society was governed by Manu Smriti. Strictly speaking, modern Hindus are not. of hindu society that is impossible our idea is to take the best idea from the original idea for example in the shrimad bhagavatam there is a description of the communist idea it is described to maharaja yudhishthir if there is a something good a good experience why shouldn't you adopt it that is our point of view beside that modern civilization is missing one all important point the aim of human life Uh, scientifically, the aim of human life is self-realization. Atma, Atma Tattva. It is said that unless the member of the human society came to the point of self-realization, they are defeated in everywhere they do. Actually, it is happening in the modern society. Despite all economic advancement and other advancement, instead of keeping peace and tranquility, there are fight. They are fighting individually, socially, politically, and nationally. If we think about it, it is a cool-headed way. Uh, we can we can see that in spite of much improvement in many branches of knowledge, we are keeping the same mentality that is visible in the lower animal society. Our conclusion, according to Shrimad 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 Bhagavatam, is that mm, this human body is not meant for working hard and hard for sense gratification. But people do not know anything beyond that. they do not know about the next life there is no scientific department of knowledge to study and what happens after this body is finished that is the great that is the great department of knowledge yeah Hare just Krishna. stop so so uh, the great department of knowledge mm. is the atma tatva science of self realization basically spiritual knowledge according to shrimad bhagavatam that is missing <laughs> so now uh, we have material knowledge which we learn in our universities in simple words physics chemistry mathematics economics finance <clears throat> architecture whatever this are uh, medical science ayurveda astrology this is all material science and spiritual science that is there in shrimad bhagavatam devotion to krishna understanding that we are not the body but we are the soul understanding karma how the material world material energy works the dharma all this encompasses in the spiritual knowledge hmm? uh so i just want to point out from another scripture what is the recommendation okay so this is another upanishad called as shri upanishad very short upanishad i think 18 verses 18 yeah 18 verses and there is a there is a uh, 11th verse which <clears throat> which will guide us vidyam sa vidya vidyam sa avidyam sa yes tat vedo bhayam sah अविद्या मृत्युम तिथ्वा विद्या अमृतम अश्नुते only one who can learn the process of nations and that of transcendental knowledge side by side can transcend the influence of repeated birth and death and enjoy the full blessings of mortality so we'll just, we'll just focus on the first line there is process of nations nations means darkness nations means ignorance so what is this process of ignorance that we are learning what is the ignorance knowledge that this ishopanishad is talking about there is a particular knowledge but it is actually not supreme knowledge it is just a knowledge but actually it is avidya what is that avidya that is this ishopanishad is talking about 
I just told you. Like that we are not this body and we are a spirit soul, right? No, that is that is the transcendental knowledge. Okay. So what is this avidya? It is a vidya, but actually it is avidya. Vidyam sir. This is a what? Hare Krishna Prabhu. Ha ha. Bol. Yeah. You are telling about about avidya Prabhu. What is avidya? Ah, what is avidya? Avidya means uh, uh, this is the body. This is the, this is the not. Uh, uh, I am your body. I am not Atma. That is the one. Another you should not know the okay, about the everything dealing with the body. All knowledge body. that deals with the body that makes body. You know. Yes, probably. How to happily live in this world is actually avidya. In simple words, all this physics, chemistry, mathematics, economics, finance, laws, ye, wo, sab, is the process of nations. By which, why it is the process of nations? It doesn't take us to back home, back to God. It doesn't be, make us self-realize, right? None of this physics, none of the C, C++, none of the finance, none of the stock market, does it make us self-realize? No. So therefore it is, it is a knowledge. Every day we are learning about it. We are teaching also to people. It is knowledge. But it is what kind of knowledge? Avidya. It is nations. And then what is transcendental knowledge? Bhagavad Gita, Srimad Bhagavatam, Chaitanya Chaitanya. Right? But what is this issue Upanishad saying? You have to learn Avidya and Vidya. And what it is saying? Side by side. Saha. It uses the word Saha. Hmm? Saha means side by side. So how should we our education be? If I ask you this question and this is the guideline for it. If you were to rectify the education system, what would you do? This verse is in front of you and now you have opportunity to rectify. Chalo. It's a very simple solution. We have to learn should, both. Ah, tell. We have to include uh, spiritual knowledge, spiritual education. Yeah. Simple. With our physics, chemistry, mathematics, economics, finance, law, everything. Artistry, pot pottery. Uh, stitching, dance, arts, astrology, astronomy. Side by side, Bhagavad Gita, Bhagavatam. That knowledge should also be there. It should be done side by side. Who is saying this? Isha Upanishad is saying this. We are not saying this. Isha Upanishad is saying this. So Vedas only say, see, you have to live in this world and you have to live not miserable in this world. Okay, You have to live uh, comfortably. So Vedas will give this knowledge. Here is the material knowledge. If you become sick, Ayurveda. If you want to know, you know, how material energy is working, all that karma knowledge is there, astrology is there, astronomy is there, you are interested. Okay, you want architecture, architecture is also there. Like that. Mathematics, yeah, wo sab. And it will give spiritual knowledge also. It will say, you are in this world not to come, not to live here eternally. You have, your goal is spiritual. Why? Because in reality you are spiritual. So here is Bhagavad Gita, here is Bhagavata. Study this also simultaneously. Saha. So in the Vedic Gurukulas, these two teachings were taught simultaneously, side by side. On one side, those who had interest in archery and all that, they were taught that. Then they would have lectures on Atma Tattva. Basically, knowledge of Bhagavad Gita. Um, like that. And then when they would graduate, these children, and at, at home, the women, the girls, they would listen that Atma Tattva from whom? Last time I told you, the Brahmanas. The Brahmanas would come at the married people homes and the girls were engaging them and they would sit. And then the Brahmana would speak. What he would speak? He would speak both these knowledge. 
knowledge of nations also and and transcendent knowledge also both and she would then listen she doesn't have to be in the gurukula her gurukula is at the home only so this is how vedic system was working side by side both things okay so i just diverted somewhere uh because yeah we we are see so that's what prabhupada is saying you have all kinds of department of knowledge but what you don't have is great department of knowledge what is that great department that is spiritual knowledge and he probably immediately starts with bhagavad gita <coughs> so read continue reading from in the bhagavad gita in the bhagavad gita 2.13 it is said dehi no asmin yatha dehe deha means this body uh, dehina means the one who owns this body dehi no asmin yatha dehe komaram yuva yuva yo vanam jara that the dehi the owner of the body is within and the body is changing from one from the another the child from the uh, child has the certain type of body that changes to another type when he is older but the owner of this body still exists throughout similarly when this body is completely changed we accept another body people do not understand this we are accepting different bodies even in this life from boy babyhood to childhood to boyhood to youth that is the fact everyone knows it it i was a child but the childhood body is no more i have a different body now what is the difficulty difficulty in understanding that when this body will be no more then i will have to accept another body and that is a great sign and it is a great sign yeah read continue professor kotaski as you know there are two quite opposite approaches to this problem the approach is slightly different according to different religions but at the same time any religion recognizes and searches for the change of the place experience the transmigration of spirit in christian religion in judaism in shila prabhupada oh yeah i am not ta- i am not <coughs> taking religion religions religious with it, with you i am talking science and philosophy one religion my may accept w- one one way that is not our concern we are concerned with the point that if the owner of the body is permanent in in spite of different changes of body uh, there should be no difficulty in understanding that when this body changes entirely the owner of this body will have another body another approach is that there is no separation there are no two phenomena the body and the owner of the body are same no emphatically no when when the body dies the owner also dies no no but that is uh, why is there no department of knowledge in the university to study in the fact scientifically that is my uh, my uh, proposition that they are lacking if it may be as you say or it may be as i say but there must be a department of knowledge to study this recently the cardiologist in tornado uh, the doctor has accepted that there is a soul and i had some cor- correspondence with him and he strongly believes there is a soul so yeah. there is just just point of- just, part, just wait okay so basically you know we see that professor kotoski is not ready to accept that you know after death also there is a spirit soul and he continues he gets a new body okay <clears throat> and prabhupada is talking about a cardiologist who accepted that so what is prabhupada trying to say prabhupada is saying this is a science just like we have other science this is also a science so let's discuss something if we are also asked you know what is the scientific basis of soul if i ask you what is the scientific basis of soul for a modern Yeah, you go ahead. Yeah, basics of soul. Soul means atma. Uh, this soul is basics uh, scientific soul. It should be actually it should be uh, paramatma. It should try to get always with parma attached with pa, uh, paramatma. No, no, wait, wait. It, What I'm asking is, what is the scientific basis or proof of soul? 
if your son daughter asks or if your niece nephew asks you are always talking this soul 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 how scientifically prove me that this soul exists what are your arguments how will you present so uh, so prabhu i have heard from many senior devotees uh, that they say that you can give this example suppose when the day i die ha huh, okay so then you will then you will not say this this is like suppose my name is meenu the meenu is lying you'll say meenu body is lying then where is meenu gone so this is also a, okay okay yeah. so let me write it down so we say he passed away okay yeah but who passed away body is lying body 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 only passed no 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 body is lying no, on soul. the ground अंडरस्टैंडिंग intuitive understanding this is when you know somebody dies that that time we say but next is intuitive understanding while living only we can say give let me give you example so this also this i heard from like, my hand in my hand yeah, yeah. i was about so, to say yeah my hand yeah explain explain this is my hand so this i have this is i have heard that take the finger and say what is this who's so this is my finger this is okay, my stomach start. this is, this is yes. my hand what does that mean like the hand is not me ha it's hand just, and me are, are different perfect. okay yeah. like we said this is my bag hand and me are different when we say this is my bag this is my car car is very easy to understand this bag also is very easy to understand it is different okay but when we say my hand we say yeah that that means it is different then exactly who we are then who we are when we say even my mind we are not like that we say my intelligence or let's say brain that means we are still separate from the brain from brain mind so then we come to conclusion we are owner of the body and that's where bhagavad gita comes and helps us that we are spirit souls so this is called intuitive understand now one may say my soul my soul and me the soul is same actually hmm? but intuitive understanding has has an explanation it definitely says my body my body means i am different from the body <clears throat> and this can be experienced how many of you are able to observe your mind you are just observing your mind your mind is telling this your mind is telling that right are you are you, are you understanding this point um if we are just quiet and meditating you know uh, calm we can observe our mind and we can see what mind is thinking so see, so so we can immediately say oh i am separate from my mind right i am actually separate from i am observing in my mind so then we can feel we can feel that we are separate okay any third proof third proof i am separate from my mind i am separate from my body okay i will tell you out of body experiences this is a documented uh, phenomena in the hospitals when they do operations they have found that uh, patients they say that patients had out of body experience you know where they say um, that they went they, they 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 could see from top 
everything and everything in sense uh, their body doctors operations etc and they said that somehow i become separated and i could see everything so these are out of body experiences next is near death experience people have almost died and come back then they have said oh i saw light i saw darkness i saw something else peace is one thing that they say fifth fifth is the very important one this is like everyone will like out of body is definitely you know in hospitals this is phenomenon is there even near death experiences they also they have died and come back na no? so they uh, they give this kind of experience so uh, tell me this last one very important one in india it is very famous <laughs> reincarnation past life remembrances this is also a documented research done by many professors this famous one is ian e. stevenson and he has found that yes in some cases this is definitely true this guy was saying or this girl was saying that she lived in this place and she had this 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 everything came out to be true they had never met each other but in this life they were and not just in india but it happened everywhere all around the world this reincarnation cases happen so it tells us that we are that we don't die that something within us don't die see this is what kotoski say na the owner of the also dies but now reincarnation says something within us never dies right how many of you had past life memories anyone not many will have but i'm just asking okay so oh. prabhu ji i didn't have past life memories uh -huh. but when i when i meet someone for the first time uh -huh. uh, it used to happen for 1 in 100 when i meet them for the first time i know about them their yeah. life their mother life. their personal life i hear some kind of voice within my mind yes about actually them. you know uh, suppose sometimes we give somebody money right uh, say we um, this is one astrologer he told me that sometimes we take services from some people so in our previous life those people had taken services from us meaning uh, we are now giving them money which they had given us in previous life so that's how you know karma brings us together and uh, makes us interact with with previous people i, I also got another interpretation prabhu ji Sure. I, i i i was not minding you know but i wanted to know who is that uh, talking to me i actually i met a german guy uh, uh -huh. first time i met him other uh, to online and i knew about his mother his ma he had some trouble uh, with his mother she died uh, in a very painful way i first time i met him i knew about his mother uh, then i got he became my close friend and then i told him first time i met you i knew i knew about your mother i got this mind voice um, then he stopped talking to me so i was little bit disturbed what is this mind voice why am i having so i got some help from one of the devotees i have seen your devotees they told that it is a super soul talking to you you mm -hmm. can sometimes uh, hear the super soul so this super soul also told me he will be your close friend and you will separate and you will feel very sad about him that also i told when i met him the first time so it is a super soul who's trying to protect me i think so prabhu okay okay, okay yeah so like you said uh, maybe i gave him money but uh, the super no, soul was i'm just giving example ha huh. um so so yeah these are something kind of out of body experience or out of normal experience Yes, where sir. you know we understand that somebody is taking we we are observing ourselves our mind and someone else is also talking to us like parmatma and and that is not the mind okay 
so these are all experiences do happen so so coming back to our point these are the scientific basis of soul okay of which the reincarnation near death experience out of body experience intuitive understanding he passed away that explanation these all five points if you say then somebody saying will understand yes uh, there is a soul and then when it takes up to the process of chanting meditation and all they they uh, they understand that i am separate from the mind i am observing my mind and that, that is the first time they understand i am not the mind <laughs> so okay okay so coming back to our uh, reading let's see how big is this okay let's finish this one paragraph recently a cardiologist in toronto see these doctors right they tell that this patient told me that he was up in the air and he saw me use this and he may and i was talking this to this nurse he is giving me exact but this fellow was anesthetic i had given him anesthesia and he was in what not aware <laughs> condition and then sometimes you know the person died there was no heart beating but then he came after like 1 hour 5 minutes something like that and then he started saying that i went here there it was very peaceful so they have these experiences and even reincarnation also this children is talking something about his past life getting afraid uh, some dreams are coming so all these are indication that definitely we are we uh, after that something within us remains okay okay continue reading from this recently a cardiologist in toronto <clears throat> recently the cardiologist in toronto the doctor has accepted that there is a soul i had some correspondence with him and he strongly believes that there is a soul so there is another point of view but our process is to accept knowledge from authority we have krishna krishna statement on this subject that he is authoritative krishna is accepted as authority by all the acharyas and bhagavad gita is accepted by scholarly and uh, philosophical circle all over the world krishna say dehi no as dehi no asmin yatha dehe koma komaram yo yo vanam jara tatha dehantara prapte dhiras tatra na muhiyate just as the soul gives up Uh, the childhood bo- childhood body and comes to the boyhood body and and then to youth the soul also give gives up the this body and accepts another body bhagavad gita 2.13 this statement is given by krishna the greatest authority according to our traditional of knowledge we accept such a statement without argument that is the way of vedic understanding yeah. hari krishna uh, just stop here so uh, see Uh, the vedic understanding is that whatever in the vedas is true but today the way the education system is uh, there is reasoning there is logic and all that the vedas also have reasoning logic and then there is a inductive way of finding the truth inductive way means our own ability so that's why we need to present proofs in different different angles so like reincarnation near death experience out of body experience all that explanations we need to for modern man to accept that there is a soul okay otherwise once uh, you know the vedic followers and all that okay this is there in bhagavad gita i accept it and then in the process of meditation they experience it uh so yeah so we are uh, it's 8:30 now so let's open up for one or two questions any questions or comments Uh, Prabhu, Vidya, uh, Avidya, you told right. Avidya means uh, the the ignorance, knowledge in ignorance, right? Yes. Yeah. So we have to learn Avidya and Vidya simultaneously, right? Yes. So what is Avidya? Knowledge of ignorance, the knowledge which we need for our day to day life in this material yeah, world. Yeah, exactly. Physics, chemistry, mathematics, economics, finance, laws. Okay, so because I'm having some disturbance in my house, my son is very naughty. <laughs> I mean, okay, good okay. point. Mm. So it. yeah, so it is this uh, Isho Parishad eleventh okay. verse which says that both knowledge should be learned side by side. Okay, sir. Yeah. Thank you. Any other question or comment?
So, uh, yeah. Krishna Prabhu? Yeah, ask please. Uh, Vidya, uh, Vidya, okay. Vidya, why is now present governments and everything, why they not put in the particular curriculum in the starting in uh, children who don't all if you know? Earlier in Rukhveda, Adhirveda, they will already, Vedas, uh, Patshala is there, they will uh, learn and and all. Oh. Why can't put this, this and all? What is the problem? Where is the problem? So, so you know, you see Prabhupada discussing in the previous uh, section, he, he was saying that, you know, the late Jawala Nehru and all that, they changed it. He's given one Bhagavad, uh, Srimad Bhagavad written, some uh, Lal Bhagavad Shastra, some, uh, is, uh, is, 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 is himself is told here, the distributed, the, is a purchased the all Srimad Bhagavatam and all distributed that, starting initially. Okay. Yeah. Why can't in the in a particular so many suppose he one one prime minister is the one priyam prime earlier uh, world prime minister cm minister they will put them on the lesson to the child and then yeah why so, can't, so this, this is needs, the, in our, this needs, our our culture yeah this so is this, our culture hindu culture in in, in india in swami vivekananda also told in america what is the what is our uh, uh, culture and all yeah in this yeah. shastras everything is told why can't put in the lesson in that uh, uh, this under particular in our modern education right yes yeah so uh, the reason is if you go back into history we had our own universities cultures everything nalanda university was there gurukuls were there many many gurukuls were there mayapur navdeep dham was the topmost uh, learning institute learning place just like today kota is there or maybe you know delhi is there or bangalore is there with isc and all that similarly at that point mayapur was there navdeep dham was there and various other places holy places and all that kashi kashi is there so when the britishers came to india and they wanted to rule over it they understood the the um the cultural impact of that is there in India and they understood you know how India works so if they wanted to rule they had to tell that this is all wrong so the way they said it this is all mythology you are talking about Ramayana and you are telling this is 800,000 years no 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 we have Darwin philosophy everybody came through apes and this is how it happened we have proofs we dig into ground and we got this bone and that bone and we are explaining, you know, this is how it changed. So when you give such kind of arguments, which are completely new for people and, you know, you make them think this way. Oh, this is all mythology, you know, 800,000 years. Who heard this? Who wrote the Vedas? If you give such arguments and all that, then uh, a person who is not very knowledgeable cannot fight with it. And he accepts that, okay, yeah, this I also think this is mythology. <laughs> so that's how you know they conquered India. First thing is culturally they showed that oh everything is mythology. They they translated everything in English and and in that in that translation they said oh this is all false but this is like this like this like this but it is false. So this is how they covered and then they said no no you have to learn English now you have to learn our subjects okay you have to learn our physics you have to learn our mathematics. You have to get this degree, which we call as. You have good communication. You have good communication. Yeah, B A M A. They get the job. And they get the job only. Ah, then we will give you job. Then you will get money, and that's what you need, right? So this is how they captured India, culturally, and so now what has happened is generations over generations we have been trained in that kind of knowledge. And now we are coming to this understanding, no, 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 this Bhagavad Gita Bhagavatam is very important. And we want to implement it. But on an, on, even if a politician knows this, still he doesn't know how to implement it. Because it will be looked in a secularism way. Huh? It will be looked at, oh, no, no, this is Hindu religion. But Prabhupada says, we are not talking religion. We are talking about science. We are talking about this science of soul. Where it is, the soul is neither Hindu nor Muslim nor Christian, nothing. Huh? We are talking about that. The Bhagavad Gita is not a sectarian religion. It is a universal philosophy, universal teaching. Now, how to implement it? It, it depends from uh, that we need mature leaders. And therefore, sometimes devotees say, okay, we cannot put it, uh, we cannot get that in the government. So, we will do it ourselves. So, sometimes devotees start their own schools, 
colleges universities and somehow they you know keep this balance and this is the worst that issue if one issue for instance says that we have to learn this side by side so uh, so yeah so this this change will happen slowly and right now you know we are all uh, we are all learning this so we will also make sure our children are learning both the science we will send him to mathematics class but we'll make sure that he's attending sunday school and hearing bhagavad gita from devotees and he's understanding bhagavad gita he's giving bhakti shastri classes he's doing this ashraya things uh, and then slowly slowly it will happen it will take some generations for uh, to change and it will happen but definitely yeah what was your question सिस्टम इज वर्किंग ना you need to provide the 10th degree and the 12th degree so um, the government has set some rules open education how you have to do you know this should be the syllabus this you this this is where you can have freedom to decide what you want and all that so to so the devotees learn all this and then they come up with their own schools own curricul- curriculum or they merge curriculums like that and at our level where we may not be sending to these schools we will try to send our kids to temple and uh, learn there right in association of devotees okay make sense yeah any any last question okay